The Basics of Biblical Greek Chapter 24 We are in the midst of working on the uh, indicative forms of the Greek verb uh, in the Omega conjugation. Let's review where we are to date. There are two sets of personal endings, primary and secondary. Within the 12 uh, endings for each class, there are six which are active and six which are middle passive. These endings go to the right side of the verb and identify subject, number, and voice. So the primary actives are nothing sigma yoda, men te nsi. The primary middle passives are my sai tai, methus the ntai. The second column of white uh, letters of endings shows those endings with the connecting vowel, omicron or epsilon. Please note the second one in the primary middle passives uh, is a contraction of epsilon plus sigma alpha yoda, uh, which contracts down to eta with a yoda subscript. Secondary endings, which are used on augmented stems, imperfect aorist, for instance, uh, the endings active are nu, sigma, nothing, men, te, nu, an alternate is san for that uh, sixth form. And then the secondary middle passives are main, sa, ta, methus, the, nta. The far right column of, of white endings uh, includes the connecting vowels, omicron, epsilon. And again, in the second uh, item, in the secondary middle passives, Epsilon plus sigma omicron contracts to omicron upsilon. Our master verb chart now uh, covers two slides. Uh, we have gotten to the point where we're beginning to see some of the nuance that occurs with different combinations of augments, tense stems, tense formatives, connecting vowels, and personal endings. Um, most recently, we have been working on the aorist forms, which show up on the next slide. In the aorists, we have learned the active and middle forms, both of which are formed on the aorist active stem. The difference between first and second aorists uh, is the presence of a tense formative in the first aorist, In the second aorists, the aorist stem varies from the present stem, and so a tense formative is unnecessary. In this lesson, we learn the aorist passives and the future passives, which are derived from the aorist passive stem. There are both second and first of both types. A particular verb will either have a first aorist or a second aorist in the passives. The first aorist passive occurs on verbs of a degree of regularity and it is formed by combining an augment, the aorist passive stem derived from the sixth principal part the tense formative, theta, eta, when you see a theta, eta, very often you're dealing with a first aorist passive. And then no connecting vowel is necessary because the tense formative has a vowel. And here is the tricky part. The tense formative tells the translator that the form is passive. And so secondary active endings are used. Secondary because there's an augment, but the passive comes from the tense formative, not from the personal ending. This is counterintuitive and can be confusing, uh, but that's the way it works in Koine and Classical Greek. The chart presented on this slide allows the student to see clearly the four parts that go together to form the first aorist passive. An augment, the aorist passive stem 
derived from the sixth principal part. The tense formative, theta eta, which indicates the form is aorist passive. And then most unusually, the secondary active endings. Those endings are nu, sigma, nothing, men, te, and nu. But notice in the aorist passive that the alternative third person plural, san, is used instead. So, elethane, elethes, elethe, elethemen, elethete, elethesan are the six forms of the aorist passive. Those forms would be translated in order. I was destroyed. You singular were destroyed. She, he, or it was destroyed. We were destroyed. You plural were destroyed. They were destroyed. As with a sigma that combines with a stop, so when a theta combines with a stop, as in the tense formative theta, eta, some um, adjustments or aspirations occur. For example, p plus theta becomes phi plus theta. Beta plus theta becomes phi plus theta. And thus the forms of the form of blepo, a blephthane, and the form of lambano, a length thane. With the gutturals, the kappa or the gamma is replaced by a key. So for de oco, the aorist passive form is a de oc thane. And for ago, the aorist passive form is ache thane. When a dental rests next to a theta, the dental is aspirated to a sig sigma. So with the root baptid, the addition of theta eta yields the form a baptisthane. Likewise, the double theta, when the theta eta is added to patho, aspirates to a pace thane. The second aorist passive. As indicated earlier, a verb will either have a first aorist passive or a second aorist passive. If the verb has a second aorist passive, the only difference from the first aorist passive is the lack of the theta in the tense formative. Second aorist passives just have an eta. And again, like the first aorist passives, second aorist passives use a secondary active ending. The chart of the aorist passive for grapho is before you. The four parts are visible. Augment, aorist passive stem, the tense formative eta, plus the primary, excuse me, plus the secondary active endings. And again, as with first aorists, the third person plural uses san instead of nu. So the forms are agraphane, agraphase, agraphe, agraphamen, agraphite, agraphesan. Translated somewhat awkwardly here, I was written, you singular were written, she, he, or it was written, we were written, you plural were written, they were written. Obviously, it's the third person form, singular or plural, that shows up in the New Testament. Let's look at some examples of these first and second aorist passives. Agrafe is third person singular, second aorist passive. It was written.
Elithemen is first person plural, first aorist passive. We were destroyed. Elithesan is third person plural, first aorist passive. They were destroyed. Please note that the sigma is part of the personal ending, not part of the tense formative, which will become important when we get to future passives. Elemphthes is the second person singular, aorist passive, of lambano, you singular, were received. Eikthesan is the third person plural, first aorist passive, of Ago, they were led. Epasthane is the first person singular, first aorist passive, from patho, I was persuaded. The future passive. Previously, when we learned the future, we learned the future active and middle based on the future active stem. The future passive is based on the aorist passive stem. But notice there is no augment. It's a future tense. Past tenses get augments. Characteristic of the aorist passive is the tense formative theta, eta, sigma. When a theta, eta, sigma is followed by an omicron or epsilon, plus a primary middle passive ending, then one has a first future passive. The formation of the first future passive on the paradigm verb leo is presented in this chart. The middle column provides the um, various parts, the aorist passive stem in white, theta, eta, sigma, the tense formative in yellow, the connecting vowel, omicron or epsilon in green, and the primary middle passive endings in blue. Those com combine quite easily except the second person singular where SI contracts to eta with the yoda subscript. So the forms are lithesomai, Lithese, Lithesitai, Lithesamatha, Lithesistha, Lithesontai. They would be translated I will be destroyed, you singular will be destroyed, she, he, or it will be destroyed, we will be destroyed, you plural will be destroyed, they will be destroyed. The second future passive. There are a few occasions where verbs form their future passive on the aorist passive stem, but without a theta. These are called second future passives. So again, no augment, aorist passive stem, a tense formative of eta sigma, omicron or epsilon is a connecting vowel, and the primary middle passive endings. The future passive of apostello is formed below by using the aorist passive stem. Parts are in the middle column. Notice how the tense formative is only eta sigma, not theta eta sigma. And when combined with omicron epsilon and a primary middle passive ending, this verb yields the forms in the right column with the additional note that the second person singular SI contracts to eta with a yoda subscript. These forms are apestalesomai, apestalese, apestalesitai, apestalesamatha, apestalesistha, Apestalesontai. 
and they are translated. I will be sent. You singular will be sent. He, she, or it will be sent. We will be sent. You plural will be sent. They will be sent. We conclude this lesson by looking at examples of future passive forms. Please note that I will branch beyond the paradigms and use some of the stems laid out for you uh, in the section called Previous Words on pages 219 to 221. Li Fei Sei, second person singular, future passive, with from Leo, you singular will be destroyed. Apestalesiste, second person plural, future passive, from apostello, you plural will be sent. Baptisthesomai, first person singular, future passive of baptizo, I will be baptized. Didakthesitai, third person singular, future passive of didasco, she will be taught. Ekblethe samatha, first person singular, future passive from ekbalo, we will be cast out. Of they say, from Ofthane, the aorist passive form of Harao, here the second person singular future passive, you singular will be seen. So Thesantai, third person plural, future passive from Sozo, they will be saved. Clay Thesiste, Second person plural, future passive, from kaleo, you plural, will be called. Notice how the uh, contract vowel lengthens to an eta, while the central vowel of the root disappears. Vowels can do funny things. So in this lesson, we've looked at the forms that are drawn from the aorist passive stem. A verb will either have a first aorist passive or a second aorist passive. Tense formative for the first aorist passive is theta eta. Tense formative for the second aorist passive is eta. And in both cases, surprisingly, secondary active endings are used. The future passive works similarly. A verb will either have a first future passive or a second future passive. The tense for formative for the first future passive is theta eta sigma. For the second future passive, it's eta sigma. But here, the personal endings are added to a connecting vowel and are what one would expect, namely the primary middle passive endings. So the forms of the aorist passive stem.